a student asked me a question. How do I use the, uh, my book of distinction material to get a distinction? Uh, that I said that whatever question is being asked is being indicated in that book and asked me that I should use 2022 uh, National Senior Certificate Examination to answer that question. So let me show you exactly uh, as we are comparing the question versus where do I find the answer in the booklet. Uh, for this case, I will only focus on questions not related to objective. So on the start side of the objective, I'm going to be a bit faster. Let's start with the section A. Uh, um, the component of DNA molecule that provide the code for protein synthesis. Which DNA, which, which component of DNA molecule that provide the code for protein synthesis? synthesis. So what causes these are the nitrogenous bases. What are the nitrogenous bases? We are talking about the thymine, uh, the guanine, the cytosine, and the adenine. These are the nitrogenous bases which are supposed to be uh, uh, organized together to form a gene. So these, these are the ones which bring about a protein. So the answer is D. Uh, then 1.1.2, during which stage of meiosis do spindle fiber begin to form? So the spindle fiber always begin to form under the preparation phase, which we call the pro phase, pro phase. So it means that uh, the answer is going to be A. I'll explain more when we go to other sections. Then they're saying that... Uh, an individual that has Down syndrome in the karyotype, in the karyotype, there is an abnormal number of chromosome at chromosome pair. So Down syndrome, whenever you talk about Down syndrome, yes, so your mind must go to chromosome number 21. Whenever you talk about Down syndrome, so you must think about an extra chromosome on chromosome number or chromosome pair number 21. So the answer is going to be, uh, the answer is going to be C. So don't forget that these objectives, each objective is two marks. Then they're saying that an individual that receives, that receives an identical allele from each parent is described as, uh, how do you describe an individual that receives an allele uh, which is identical from both parents. For example, you have uh, the parent is capital T, small t, and then another parent is capital T, small t. So now if I receive this and this, how do I call this? So now if the baby gets small t, small t, or this and this, and the, the kid is capital T, capital T, for example, uh, yes, it means that these two alleles are the same. These two alleles are the same. So how do we call that individual which receives those two alleles? So because they are the same, same is homo, homo, homo. So it is going to become homo zygous because you are describing uh, a, a zygote, a zygote, Yes, so that zygote has the same kind of allele. So the answer is going to be C, meaning that homozygous. Then the next question, they are saying that the plant, the plant um, species that has a diploid chromosome number of 12. So if a plant species has a diploid chromosome number of 12, yes, which of the following is a haploid chromosome number for this species? It means that if it diploid, di means two. Di, di means if it is diploid, it means two. Two. That's why it's called it two. Two sets of chromosome, two N. So haploid, haploid, diploid means two. And then haploid means one. If the diploid is 12 
and this means two sets of chromosome then haploid means half yes so half of the 12 is six so one n is gonna be what is gonna be six so when we come back here we shall see that uh we shall see that the number of chromosome from 12 from 12 is gonna be half of 12 is gonna be six yes so it's gonna be six so the answer is going to be uh c then they are saying that um inheritance inheritance by multiple alleles inheritance by multiple alleles in a genetic in genetics is referred to as um uh two alleles that influence the two characteristics two alleles no uh it's, it's more than two more than two alleles this is correct that influence one character yes it is more than two alleles then that those two alleles must influence more than Sorry, those two alleles must influence one characteristic. A good example for this is bloody blood group. Bloody group. Yeah, it is one allele. Sorry, it is one gene. One gene. One gene. Which gene is blood group? That's one character. And then, how many alleles are there? We have allele for A, dominant allele, allele for B, uh, dominant allele and then allele for all recessive allele so we have how many alleles there are three so because there are three they are multiple these multiple alleles will influence one gene or one characteristic which is a bloody group so that's why you're saying that b is the most correct answer more than two alleles that influence one characteristic which one of the following is uh, a reproductive isolation? When you talk about reproductive isolation, it means that the organisms are being isolated as a result of the reproductive strategy or the reproductive mechanism. So they are saying that breeding at the same time of the year, they can't be isolated if they are the same time of the year. Infertile offspring, this one is correct. Plant adaptation to the same. If it is the same pollinating agent, then they can't be isolated. Improve the fertilization. This is just increase the ability to bring about fertilization. So the answer is going to be uh, B. Why? It, um, an example is, for example, uh, a horse. You have a horse and then uh, a donkey. When you cross the two, you produce a mule which cannot uh, reproduce again. It, it is infertile. So it means that they are being separated. So the answer is B. Then you're saying that um, normal human over have uh, normal human. Remember that when you talk about humans, when you talk about humans, they have what you call 46 chromosomes. Chromo zones yes but each each over or, or sperm it has half of the chromosome number yes so it means that it has 23 here 23 but among these 23 if it is a male is gonna have y and if it is a female is gonna have is gonna have x but which chromosome number will have the y and which chromosome number is going to have the x the chromosome number 20 the 23rd chromosome is going to be x on the female and the 23rd chromosome is going to be y 23rd is going to be y on the male so that if now the y of the male fuses with the ovum of the female which is x is going to be xy and then we produce a male and then the female is always x so that's why the male of the x of the male fuses the x fuses with the x of the female then it's going to become x x what x x and then it's going to become a female so now they're saying that normal human over have 22 autosomes from chromosome number one from chromosome number one until chromosome number 22 we call them autosomes in both male and female so 
22 autosomes. So whenever I have 22, that answer could be correct. I have a 22 here, I have a 22 here. So it means that now these two answers are wrong. So we have wiped them out. So it means that I have this and this. But they're saying a normal human over. When they talk about over, ne, they are talking about a female. So this must go to female. Yes, if it is a female, female can't have Y. They're always having X. So it means that uh, the answer is going to be X. And 22 autosomes and an X. It can't be 22 autosomes. Yes, it's 22 autosomes and a Y. Then it's going to become a male. It's going to become a sperm. So it is 22 autosomes. So it, basically it is um, a and over it is not a spam. Then the, the next question is saying that uh, which of the following, which one of the following occurs in mitosis, but uh, not in, which one of the following occurs in mitosis, but not in meiosis. When you talk about mitosis, um, mitosis, you have one cell. Né? You have one cell, one cell, we will divide it to form two cells, but these two cells are identical, identical. But if you look at meiosis, meiosis, you have one cell, you form two cells in the first meiotic division, you divide again, you form four cells. These are the one which forms the sperms and the ova. And then these have half the chromosome number, they have, ha they have, half the chromosome number to the parent, which is, for example, if it is a human, is 46, and then he will experience 23 chromosomes. So now what happens here in the question? They're saying that two cells are formed at the end of the division. They're saying which one of the following occurs in mitosis. So it means that it occurs, we are comparing mitosis over meiosis. It means that the first statement must be belonging to mitosis. The second statement must be belonging to meiosis. So the first statement they are saying that uh, mitosis, uh, they're saying two cells are formed under mitosis at the end of the division. Yes, we see here two cells are forming at the end of the division. They're saying crossing over takes place. We don't have crossing over in mitosis. Uh, we don't have crossing over. So this one is ruled out. The most correct answer is A. So the answer is going to be A. And then the last objective, uh, the last objective is about the graph. Um, it's about the phylogenetic tree. They're saying that the graph below shows the percentage similarities between humans. Between So we are talking about, we are not talking about differences. We are talking about similarities, percentage similarities uh, between humans, uh, and then DNA, and then DNA of some species of African apes. So it means that if you look at this, if it is similarities, it means that humans and the chimpanzee will share 98% of DNA. And then uh, gibbon and the humans, they share 96% DNA. And then the rhesus monkey, um, we share 94% DNA. And then the galago, we share 72% DNA. So now a question is asking, which one of the following phylogenetic tree best represents information in the graph. Uh -huh. uh, they are saying that uh, basically if you look at these uh, percentages, the more is shooting towards 100, the more is uh, like we are related. It means that humans, humans and the chimpanzee we are more closely related than humans and the gibbon. Why? Because the difference here is two, while the difference here is four. And then the difference here is six. It means that we are more closely related. If we look at diversion, we diverted recently compared to the, uh, the gibbon. Now let's go to, we are seeing here human, human and chimpanzee. Yes, they are a little bit close related and they are recent. If you look at them here, 28, sorry, 
difference and 4% difference. And then it means that we are recently, but we are next, we are next, uh, the gibbon, the gibbon chimpanzee, yes. The gibbon diverted after. No, no, no. Before the chimpanzee diverted from human. This is what it means that the gibbon, the gibbon diverted after. No, no, no. Before the chimpanzee did what? Did uh, separated. And then the rhesus monkey, because it is 6%, uh, was the first before the gibbon separated. And then if you look at the galago, uh, separated a long time ago. That's why you see that the difference between this and the human is too big. Why? Because they diverted a long time ago, so the nature modified them differently. So, uh, if you look at the most correct answer, will be uh, will be C. You'll find out that the most correct answer is C. This is a phylogenetic tree, which we are re requires to be studied a little bit more. And uh, if you look at it, you don't need to cram, you just have to know the principles of understanding of the principles of the phylogenetic tree how do you apply this phylogenetic tree basically you just have to look at the similarities and differences then these are 10 questions in most cases they come between 8 to 10 and each question comes to max so now we're going to go to question 1.2 and this is related to the terminologies 1.2 which are biological terms here yeah, is saying that the division of the cytoplasm. Now, here we are going to see the answer corresponding where we, we are we supposed to get these answers from our booklet. As we said that it is a distinction material, so we need to find out each and every question which is in this paper, where are we going to find the answer. This uh, division of the cytoplasm, this is, uh, this is called uh, cyto, cyto cytokinesis. So where do we find this? How do we know this? So we're going to go to our book and then you go to meiosis. Yeah, it's here, telophase. We are saying that the daughter cell chromosomes reach the pole, a new nucleus form, the cell membrane of each cell constrict. The cytoplasm divide into cells, which we call cytokinesis. So meaning that the division of the cytoplasm is called cytokinesis kinesis um here that's how it is being answered and then we go to the next question the sugar molecule present in the nucleotide of rna Acid. it means that the kind of sugar which is found there is ribose so where do we find this we go back to our book on dna we're gonna find it here you're saying that single strand the molecule consists of nucleotides each nucleotide is made up of a sugar called ribose so you see the answer is there and this is the structure of rna so ribose is the sugar which is located in rna the position of a chromosome uh the position of the gene on a chromosome this one is called a uh, locus locus so if you go to our book where do we find the position of a chromosome? We will find it at the beginning of the beginning of genetics, position of the gene on the chromosome. So basically, these are what you call the locus. And also here you see that these are positions, these are positions of genes. So each individual uh, position is called a locus. And if there are many, we call them loci. Another question they're saying that. The process by which DNA makes exact copy of itself. This is DNA. This is what? DNA. We'll find out that it's called DNA replication. I think this one is easy. You can find it in DNA replication. What is DNA replication? Is the process by which DNA makes as an exact copy of itself. And if you look at this question, they are saying the process by which DNA makes exact copy of itself. So exactly what is there in that book is just what they wrote here. And then they're asking you the question. So it is DNA replication. 
undifferentiated cell that may be stimulated to develop into uh, into any uh, body cell. So we call these ones stem 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 cells. So where do we find this? We will find this in our book uh, uh, in uh, genetic engineering. Yeah, there we go. You're saying that stem cells, these are cells with unique ability to develop into specialized cell type in the body. So if you look at the question here, it's saying that undifferentiated cells that may be stimulated to develop into, develop into body, uh, into type of body cell. So here you're seeing that, that um, these cells, what happens, they can develop into specialized cell types in the body. So it's just a reverse, but that's what they are looking for, which you call the stem cells. So there is no question which you're going to find in the booklet, you're going to find in the exam, and then it's only being answered by this booklet, which we call uh, uh, a distinction material, uh, Excel in life science. So now there is another question. They're saying that Mendel's prince, uh, principle, uh, which states that the organisms uh, pour, uh, possesses two factors which separate uh, that each gamete contain only one of these factors. Why do we call them factors? Before we started to call them genes, we are calling them factors. The answer here is Mendel's law of segregation. So basically, that is the answer. It's a segregation. So now, uh, where do we find this answer? We will find this answer uh, from this booklet. Yeah, we will find this answer on this book. Mendel's law of segregation states that they're saying that Mendel's law of segregation says that the diploid organisms passes uh, randomly, passes randomly selected alleles for, for a trait to its offspring, such that offspring receives one allele from each parent. So the question here is asking, the principle which states that organism uh, possesses two factors which separate. Yes, they separate so that each gamete, that is the offspring, each gamete will contain only one of these factors. So here they are saying that um, the diploid, it, it means that the organism uh, passes randomly. Uh, yes, we don't know which one is it, but randomly, it happens randomly, uh, the selected allele for a trait into offspring. How do you pass this? We pass them through gametes, such that the offspring receives one allele from each parent. So this is Mendel's law or principle of segregation. So uh, our answer here comes back to Mendel's uh, principle of segregation. Then another question, they are saying that uh, evolutionary theory that propose long periods of uh, long, long periods where species do not change, alternating with the short periods where rapid change occurs. This is punctuated equilibrium. Where do we find this? Yeah, the answer is yeah, it's saying that um, punctuated equilibrium what happens to it? This evolution inv uh, evolution involves long periods of time where the species do not change. So it alternates with it has short periods of uh, short periods uh, short periods of time where there is a rapid change. There is evolution. There is long period of time where the species don't don't change, and it alternates with the short periods of time where the species is changing. So basically, long period of no change and then short periods of species changing. If we come back to our question, we shall see that the thing that theory that proposes that long periods of uh, species not changing and alternating with the periods where the species is changing and it is short period. So basically, that is the answer. So this is also being answered by the book. Tangled network of DNA uh protein located in the nucleus this is a chromatin network let's see where we find it yeah we can find it here chromatin or chromatin network is being indicated here yeah here is showing you that uh is a substance 
within chromosome consists of DNA protein. So if you look at it, you see it that it is uh, uh, it is a network. It's a network. And also, if you go back to DNA replication, you'll find it again. Uh, it's chromatin network. How it is uh, consists of. You see, these are what called chromatin network. These are the chromatin network. So basically, still it can be answered by that. So you're saying that entangled network of DNA. So it means that it, it consists of DNA and protein and protein located in the. So if you look at it, it is uh, DNA, yes, and its network and is located in the nucleus. Then uh, the natural shape of DNA is double helix. How does the, our book uh, answer this? If you go to the structure of DNA, yeah, you have to go to the structure of DNA. Yes, describe the structure of DNA. You will find out that DNA strands twist to form a double helix. Forms a double helix. So basically, the book answers that question also. Then another one is the phase in cell cycle during which cell growth occurs. During which cell growth occurs. When does cell growth occurs? We shall see that cell growth occurs in inter, inter, inter phase. So where do we find this in our book? So in uh, during this is what called the growth phase. And then we have the mitotic phase. So this is being answered by during interphase or before the cell division. So basically, if you look at DNA replication, that's when the cell is, is growing. It's supposed to grow. And then the growth occurs during interphase or before the cell starts to divide. So this can answer our question. A group of, a group of similar organisms that in a particular place at a particular time with ability to interbreed, what is it? A group of organisms that occur in a particular place at a particular time within, with ability to interbreed. Since is a group of organisms, then it's going to be, uh, and they're able to interbreed. Since they can interbreed, then automatically it is a species. But it's a group of these organisms. Then, because it's a group, then it's going to become a population. So the, the word group cancels out for the species and then forms population. So the answer becomes a uh, only. They are saying that uh, manipulation of biological process to satisfy human needs. The answer is because this uh, manipulation it is technology, but because it is biological process, then it's bio. So it becomes B only. Who discovered the structure of DNA molecule? James Watson and Francis Crick. Francis Crick, then it means that uh, both A and B. Uh, please always follow instructions because the instruction is saying A only, B only, both A and B or not. Some people, they only write A, they write B, they write both. What is both? Both mangoes and uh, oranges? Both males and females? What is both? You have to say both A and B. Don't say A, because if you don't just say A only, it means that maybe even B is correct. What you do is you have to put only, only, both A and B or not. Try to follow the instructions. In tomato plant, tall stems are dominant over short stems, and the red fruits are dominant over yellow fruits. A farmer crosses a homozygous tall homozygous, then it means that now it, it is homozygous tall, so it means that it's going to be capital T, capital T with the yellow. Yellow is, we say that yellow is recessive, which is the moment they say uh, yellow, I don't need to say homozygous or heterozygous. It's always recessive because it is, um, it is always heterozygous. 
sorry, is always homozygous because it's a recessive plant um, that is heterozygous for both characteristics. A farmer, a farmer crosses homozygous tall, homozygous tall, yellow, uh -huh, yellow tomato plant with a plant that is heterozygous. It means that heterozygous for both, then it means that it's going to be capital T, small t, and then capital R, small r. They name the type of genetic cross. Because you're involving two characteristics. Which characteristic? The height. The height of this it means that we are involving the height. And then crossing with the, uh, another characteristic is the tomato color. That is the color, the color uh, of tomato. So two characteristics, that is height and the color. So the answer is dihybrid cross. Where do we get it in our booklet? Yes, we get it from a dihybrid cross involved two an inheritance of two characteristics. So uh, here we see that you have the height and the color, two characteristics. So we're saying that in the dihybrid cross, you a cross which involve two character, and then they're saying give the genotype of uh, homozygous tall and yellow plant. We have seen uh, homozygous tall, we have seen it, which is uh, capital T, capital T, and then yellow, which is the recessive. We said it here is a recessive, so it's going to be small. List the genotype of all of possible uh, gametes for a plant with heterozygous both alleles. So if it means that it is heterozygous, it's going to be capital T, small t, capital R, small r, so that because it is a uh, dihybrid, for it means that I'm going to have this with this, it's going to be capital T, capital R, this with this, it's going to be capital T, small t, then this with this, it's going to be small t, capital R, this with this, it's going to be small t, small t. That's why there are four marks, giving you this, giving you this, giving you that, and that. Yes. So, we have this must go with these two, and this must go with this two. So this T with capital R, then capital T with small r, then small T with capital R, then small T, T, small r, small T, small r. Yes. So basically that is it. Um, then they're saying that in hemophilia, sex, hemophilia, is a sex-linked recessive, is sex-linked trait. This, the pedigree diagram below shows the inheritance of the hemophilia in the family. Now, you always need to know that if it is sex-linked, even if they say male and female, but they have not mentioned that it's a sex-linked, please don't use X and Y. But if they say sex-linked, always use, for a male, always put uh x y while the female use x x and you also need to know before you go for this question you need to know that always because uh, a circle a, a box means a male while a, a circle means a female sometimes we don't give you a key sometimes you can even ask you a box means what yes so let's continue to our uh pedigree can this question be answered by our booklets yes because we have ever that we have many questions concerning about pedigree diagram. Let's see. Yeah, this is a, a sex linked disorder. So it means that whenever you you see a sex linked um, a, a box means a male, while a circle means a female. All right, let's go back to the question. State what is represented by a square? or a box uh, on the pedigree diagram. We have seen it that a square is male, while um, a circle is a female. State the number of generations represented in this diagram. You have to count them. One, two, three. So those are three. Those are three generations. Three generations. Just count. Just count one, two, three. 
those lines. Then you're saying that offsprings of individual P and Q, P, P and Q, so these are offsprings. However, not whatever on this line means offspring. This gave rise to this, this, and this. What about this and this? This one is an intruder. Who married this guy, married this girl from these people? And also this girl married this guy from these people. So these are just people who came into the family, but these are the offsprings of P and Q. So there are three of them. They are saying that give the letter only of female who have hemophilia. Letters of female who have hemophilia. So the shaded part is because it's recessive, they are affected with hemophilia. So now they are saying that give letters only of female who have hemophilia. So female is one, is two. So there are two people who have hemophilia. Then give the genotype of R, R, where is R? R is a female, but a female came from a guy who had hemophilia. So it means that it is heterozygous and is a female. This one and this one, they gave rise to a baby who is sick with hemophilia. Then it means that uh, the lady is heterozygous. So it means that R, since it is sex linked, because it's sex linked, they mentioned it. So I'm going to start with X and X because it is a female. And then hemophilia is, is caused by a recessive allele, which is put on the X chromosome. So for normal, um, it's going to be capital H because, and then small h. Why? Because this person is heterozygous, is a carrier who carries this recessive. Because we have to see how did they get this. If, 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 if a male, if this guy is capital X, small, um, capital X, capital H, because it's normal, why at the moment, why doesn't carry anything? And then this one X, capital small, then it's capital H, small H, so that now this combined with this, this combined with this, and then I form capital is X, small H, and then Y, which gives rise to this boy. Therefore, the female, if it was capital H, capital H, I wouldn't have produced the baby who is sick. So the genotype of R is capital H, small h. Then another question, uh, this marks the end of section A. What about section B? What about section B? You see that the questions in section A, you can score all the marks. You can score all the marks. Which question two, they are saying that the diagram below uh, shows or represents one cell in a phase of meiosis. This, they are not saying that this is a human cell. They have not talked about the word human. So, you must not think about 23 pairs of chromosome, please. Don't talk about 46 chromosome, please, because they have not talked about human. So now they are saying identify the phase of meiosis. So they are in, uh, they are uh, uh, along the equator, along the equator. So because they're along the equator, so the phase is going to be mera phase. But which mera phase? They are single, they are not double. Mm? If they had another one here, then they would have been double. So it would have been mera phase one. But because they are single, therefore it is mera phase two. So it means that uh, the phase which is indicated there is mera phase two. Give an observable reason for your answer because chromosomes have been aligned along the equator singly. So that it must show. Where do we find this in our book? We go to meiosis. Yeah, you see that the chromosomes are, are aligned along the equator singly. But if it, it, it was supposed to be meiosis one, it would have been like this. There are two, they're in pairs, but they're not in pairs, therefore it is meiosis two. Then they're saying identify A, what is A? A is a cell membrane. Don't confuse the cell membrane with the, the nuclear membrane. What is outside is cell membrane. 
and then B, these are fibers which hold the chromosomes in place, which are spindle, spindle, fibers or spindle threads. Then describe the role of B in the movement of chromosome during meiosis. B. These ones, they are very important as they try to contract, they shorten, and then they pull the chromosomes or the chromatids to opposite poles. And also, they are very important in holding the chromosome in place, maybe during, uh, during meropathy. So, uh, where do we get this? We get this during anaphase, spindle fiber, shorten, and it pull the, chromo the homologous chromosome to opposite poles. That's where we get that answer from. What spindle fibers or threads are the one which hold this chromosome? So the book is answering that question very well. Then another question they're saying that draw a, a diagram of, of, draw a diagram of the Draw, draw a, a label diag diagram of the structure C uh, that would appear in final phase of this mitotic division. Show the correct shading of C. So where is C? So remember, this is going to split. It is a chromosome. It is a chromosome. So if it splits, uh, let me draw it here. It is a chromosome, yes, with a centromere there, but half of it is shaded here. We see it. So when it splits, one is going to go this side, one is going to go that side. So it means that um, this chromosome is going to look like that, and then the other one is going to look like that with a shaded part. So what is this? When it reaches the pore, we call it chromosome. Chromosome. But which chromosome is this? Is an replicated chromosome or single stranded chromosome. Or we can call it Dora chromosomes. Yes. Uh, whenever I ask you to draw, never ever draw anything without writing a title. You must always write a title in the O caption. The next question is about DNA. DNA. Uh, this DNA is basically under protein synthesis. So, can our book answer this question? Let's go there and see. Yeah, the question is there. That's where the question is. The question is here with us. It's there and then here. There we go. They're saying that. Name the process that occur at W, this question. This is what they're looking for. So if you come here, they're looking for this. And then we also have the equation. Mm, we have this. This is the question. They are looking for what is happening inside this process. This process, if you look at this, what is happening inside the nucleus. That's what they are looking for because this is the nucleus, which is transcription. Then they are saying, uh, name the process. Why? Um, obvious, if you have transcription, this one is going to be translation. So they are looking for this, transcription. Relation. Mm -hmm. Then they are saying that uh, identify organelle X. Organelle X is this. They are looking for this organelle X, this wall. This wall, if you come here, they are looking for this. This wall, which is the nuclear membrane. Remember, mm, uh, remember, this is the nuclear nuclear membrane the membrane of the nucleus well this one is cell uh, cell membrane yes and then they are saying that molecule z where is molecule z molecule z they are looking for this because it is on the ribosome and it has moved out of the nucleus is this then it is messenger 
messenger RNA. Yes, and then they are saying that describe state two locations of DNA in a cell other than in the nucleus. They are saying two, we find it in the, mit the mitochondria and also in the chloroplast. So let's see it in our book. If we come here on the types of DNA, we shall see that if you have the nuclear DNA found in the nucleus, they say other than this. So you have the mitochondrial DNA found in the mitochondria, and then the chloroplastic DNA found in the chloroplast, meaning that that is the answer. Then another question they're asking, describe the process W. Where is process W? They're looking for transcription. How do I explain or how do we explain transcription from our book? Transcription is being explained nicely. DNA double helix unwind. So basically, we give you a tick here. DNA double helix. Double helix, in most cases, we give you a tick. Yeah, DNA double helix unwind. So when you say unwind, we give you a tick here. The weaker region bond break. Weaker region bond breaking and unzipping is the same thing. One strand. This is very important. Sometimes they say two strand. No, no. One strand will act as a template measure of messenger RNA using the free uh, messenger RNA nucleotide. Then they're saying that the messenger RNA is complementary. We like this complementary to DNA whereby A goes with U and then C goes with G. Remember, this is transcription. You are forming messenger RNA. So we don't have messenger RNA now has the coded message for protein synthesis and then it moves out of the nucleus via the nuclear pore and then goes to the ribosome where it attaches itself. So you get the marks, get all the marks. The reason why this book is changed in different color so that you know exactly where the marking point is. Yes. Then you are saying that another question is uh, DNA base triplet code for serine. Uh, serine is here, serine, but they are saying this, they are saying they are looking for DNA. So now we have to convert this into two uh, times because we have tRNA, tRNA, we have to change it to messenger RNA, and then we go to DNA. So if it is tRNA, it is uh, saying serine is U, C, G. So it's going to be U goes with A, C goes with the uh, G, and then G goes with the C. So it's going to be T, C, G. So that is the code for DNA. So it means that you have to convert it into two times. They're saying that the first two amino acids coded by the molecule Z in the diagram uh, from diagram from left to right. The first two amino acids coded by the, the Z and the diagram from left to right. So left, left to right. So I have this and I also have this. But I need to first read this is messenger. I need to go to the table and check. So since it is, is transferring A, so I have to convert this into uh, U goes with A, A goes with U, and then G. So and then another one is C, A, U. So A, U, G. I come here, I look for AUG, which is tyrosine, and then uh, CAU, 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 which is baline. What is the chance? What is the chance in the sequence of the nitrogenous base in DNA molecule called? What is the change in the sequence of, uh, of nitrogenous bases in the DNA molecule called? This is gene mutation. So we call it gene imitation. Why? Because the bases have been changed. Then they're saying the code for this ACU. ACU on molecule Z changed to this. Explain the effect of this. This can also be answered by the book. If you go to the end of DNA, it is here. What will happen if this mutation changes the triplet 1 to this? Or this to this? So basically, if you go here, then automatically is being answered there. And then this is the uh, permanent, is the uh, mutation, uh, which is permanent alternation of DNA sequence that make up a gene. 
question they have asked here uh change in the sequence of nitrogenous base how is it called it is a uh, gene mutation so now if if this we are saying that c u c u a we are saying codons so we have to change it into anticodons so we are saying that c u c u u is going to be g a a and then this one's going to be g g a if this codes to the for the same amino acid as this there will be no change in the protein because it's just coded it's like having two names and i call you with the first name you say yes sir i call you with the second name still you say yes sir but if now i call you with a different name you won't say yes sir because we're a different person so if this codes for the same amino acid as this the protein will remain the same but if this codes for a different amino acid as from this then it means that the protein will change so it means that if you come here gaa gaa it is leucine while gaa g g a g g a is proline it means that change of this to this change of this to this will result in a different amino acid being coded from uh leucine to proline which will result in a different protein change in 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 uh in uh c u u to c c u will result in a different amino acid coded that is from leucine to proline from leucine to proline which will result in the structure of a protein yeah i think i'm going to stop here yes i'm going to stop here from i'm going to stop here when i come back i will finish this uh this uh paper uh from 2.3 thank you very much uh please don't forget to subscribe if you have many questions drop them or you can send them on whatsapp we will answer them uh before or with immediate effect thank you very much